Dan Dukniak. I am the general manager of the Waukesha Water Utility. And in our effort to continue our communications with residents um, along the route and people that will be affected by the project, we are hosting this open house on the return flow construction portion of our project. This is only about return flow, uh, the return flow pipeline, which has areas that are in uh, Racine Avenue, I-43 and Durham Road generally. Um, there's some additional roads that are affected, but th that's the general corridor that we're going through. There will be a water supply meeting once we have a schedule from the contractor. We just don't have that uh, level of detail yet. So once we have that, we will schedule one with the on the water supply route, which comes up National Avenue and Coffee Road. And we will make sure that uh, we get that meeting out there and we have an open house for that portion also. At this point, I'd like to introduce the mayor of New Berlin. I believe he's on the line or on the, he should be a participant. And mayor, if you um, have anything to say, uh, feel free to, to make a comment at this point. Okay, I think I believe the mayor's on the line. I don't know if his if he's muted, but if he comes on, I will I will pause and I will let him um, make a comment at that point. Um, so along with me, I have uh, Katie Richardson, who's from Greenland Hansen. She's the program manager. She will be talking about the route and communications for the program. And Jim Cobb is from Black and Beach. He's the construction manager for the project, and he will be going giving a overview of the construction on the route. A few little housekeeping items that we have. Um, this is an online meeting due to safety during COVID-19. I know, um, I'm sure everyone is like me. We're sick of the whole COVID issue, but we need to stay safe during these times. So we appreciate you joining us on this virtual open house. You, because there's a larger audience, uh, you are muted but you can submit questions at any time using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. There will be a live question and answer session at the end. We will try to address questions that were submitted during our presentation, but we will also address some questions at the end. And if there are any questions in the Q&A, um, we will be more than happy to answer those questions. Some questions may be more specific um, to the homeowner or to a specific area on the um, route. At that point, when we get into real specific questions, what we'll do is we'll follow up with you directly. And that way we can either meet with you directly or have a conversation with you directly so that we can answer those questions directly for you. This meeting is being recorded and it will be available on the website, greatwateralliance.com. We should have that up by Monday, um, that's what we're hoping to. So if there's any of your neighbors that maybe are asking questions or, or maybe miss the information, they can sure go back and rewatch this uh, presentation on our website, greatwateralliance.com. So first I'm gonna open up and I'm gonna touch about the need for a reliable water supply for the residents of Waukesha. Waukesha is uh, currently under a court order to bring its water into compliance with the radium standards by September of 2023. We currently depend on deep aquifer sandstone wells and the groundwater in those in that aquifer is down more than 350 feet, which exceeds the uh, minimum set by the state. And we are placed in a groundwater management area. That is because there's a thin layer of shale, which is the red layer. It says Makokota shale confining layer on the arrows pointing to it. There's a, thin, there's a layer of shale that's probably about 100 to 150 feet deep that prevents water from naturally percolating through the aquifer from the surface down to the deep aquifer to recharge the deep aquifer. Therefore, when you're pulling water from the deep aquifer and, and like we do as a region, you create a cone of depression in that aquifer and you draw down that aquifer. And we have drawn down that aquifer. And, and as you draw down that aquifer, you start to enter, you start to see contaminants in the aquifer, such as radium. The level of radium is increasing. And we looked at all of the, when we looked at all of the alternatives, 
um, they would all in negatively impact wetlands, rivers, and streams in the area. So we need to protect those wetlands, rivers, and streams from um, the overusage of the aquifer. So after years of study, um, we have, I, I came to the utility in two, January of 2003. The utility started with a future water supply study in 2002. And that recommended Lake Michigan as our, as our water supply alternative. Uh, over, over, the over the last almost 20 years of research and analysis with 14 alternatives that were studied in depth, the conclusion was that the only reasonable alternative for the city of Waukesha is a Lake Michigan alternative. That is because it is sustainable for the long-term for many generations it is protective of the environment as we can recycle and return that water to the Great Lakes having no impact on the Great Lakes. And it is the best solution for the ratepayers of the city of Waukesha. How did we get to this phase? Well, or how did we get to this place? Well, first we worked in 2010, we submitted our initial application and we worked with the DNR to get approval. Once the DNR, took it through the environmental impact statement process that, and believe they had a, uh, an approvable application. They submitted that application to the Council of Great Lakes Governors at the end of 2015. And in 2016, the Council of Great Lakes Governors and uh, made up of the eight Great Lakes Governors and the two premiers, I'm sorry, the Council of Compact Council is made up of the eight Great Lakes Governors. Um, but the entire region, the Great Lakes Governors and the two premiers from the um, Ontario or from the uh, Providence provinces in uh, Canada unanimously approved our application. We then moved on and we negotiated a water supply deal with the city of Milwaukee, which is similar to the New Berlin residents on the east side of New Berlin, where they get their water from. And we successfully negotiated with Milwaukee. We then we worked through the process of designing and developing the um, pro program. We had reservoirs and booster station that were going to be located in Minooka Park, but we had a settlement with the city of New Berlin that relocated those facilities to the Nike Rempe site off of Broadway and the bypass in the city of Waukesha. We are also going to be funding this program through uh, federal and state loans. We were successful in gaining um, uh, access to the WIFIA pro to the uh, WIFIA loan through the WIFIA program. That will save uh, Waukesha ratepayers about a million dollars a year. And now we are at the point where construction is beginning. We have awarded um, four out of the six contracts. Uh, the, actually, the fifth one is out to bid, and the sixth one will be out to bid uh, after the first of the year. I'm sorry, three of the six contracts. One is out to bid now, one will be bid at, after the first of the year, and then there's the Milwaukee boost station, Booster Station project. So construction, we will actually be putting pipe in the ground later this month or early next month, pipe will begin to go on the ground. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Katie Richardson, our program manager, and she's gonna talk about the route and communications, and I will be back once we get to the Q&A portion of this. Katie, it's all yours. Okay, thank you, Dan. Um, so as Dan mentioned, we're going to talk about the, the return flow route, which is the contract packages five and six. Jim, will, our construction manager, will go through in more detail which roads that uh, will be impacted. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit at a high level about what the return flow route, it, its purpose is, and then also about the communications that you'll have as construction is getting started. So the return flow pipeline um, is the pipeline that's going to go from the clean water plant in the city of Waukesha to the Root River to return highly treated effluent back to the Lake Michigan watershed. As Dan mentioned, uh, this project is, has been done after the Compact Council or the Compact, excuse me, Great Lakes Compact was put in place in 2008. And as part of that, there is a return flow portion to uh, return the water back to the watershed. So we're going to be focusing on the sections that are going to be starting construction in the near future. We're going through the permitting process right now, getting our permits from the city of New Berlin and Waukesha County and um, Wisconsin DOT, where this work will be completed within the city of, uh, of New Berlin. So go to the next slide. And you might be asking yourself, why do we need 
the return flow or why is it required by the compact council? The intent of the return flow line is to make sure that diversions moving forward that are taking water out of the Great Lakes watershed are returning the same volume back. So we, every, uh, the same amount of volume that we're taking from the city of Milwaukee and using in the city of Waukesha, we're gonna treat with tertiary treatment to a high level and then return that back to the Great uh, Lakes watershed, the Lake Michigan watershed. Um, what this does is it puts treat, highly treated water back into the environment. It ensures there's no net impact on the lake levels. And it also, in this case, we were able to find a location in the Root River that returns back to the Lake Michigan watershed where we're able to provide flow augmentation and enhance the habitat and the fisheries that are along the Root River. The Root River can get at times very muddy and very shallow in portions. And by adding back um, this steady flow, we can raise that base level, which allows for the fish to spawn and, and egg ha uh, hatcheries to do what they need to do. Additionally, by reducing the impact to the deep aquifer that Dan mentioned, we can actually help the impact of the uh, more shallow aquifer as well and return some of the flow that's underground going from the Lake Michigan watershed to Waukesha. Well, that diversion won't be happening anymore. And so wetlands and waterways can be improved as well. So for the schedule, I'm sure that's why a lot of you are here. What's gonna be happening? We're gonna talk in detail about the very specific um, notices that you're going to be getting, but construction for this return flow pipeline is coming to your neighborhood soon. The construction um, for contract package five is beginning at the Waukesha Clean Water Plant, and that work will eventually work towards Sunset and Racine, and, and work its way then down Racine into I-43 and continue on. On contract package six, there's work and Jim will show exactly where that's gonna be started uh, in the city of New Berlin as well. And that's gonna be beginning um, construction we see starting at the clean water plant is gonna be happening in the next couple of weeks. You're gonna see the construction for contract package six near the industrial park um, either next month or maybe early next year. As we move through 2021, we're gonna to continue to do the construction in New Berlin through 2021. And there was a question that had come in that was pre-registered about whether or not this activity would be tunneling or open cut activities. And it's actually gonna be a combination of both. And I'll let Jim speak to that, but there's, there's areas where we are able to construct in an open cut way. And then there's areas where we need to avoid features, habitats, waterways, um, and other items like that where that we don't wanna disturb where we are doing some tunneling. And then we anticipate the completion of this segment of the return flow pipeline to be done in 2022. So where can you get more specific information? I'm gonna talk through a number of different ways that we're gonna communicate with you when we're gonna have construction in your area and where you can get questions answered. Um, your best source of information is gonna be the Great Water Alliance website. There is an interactive route map on the website that will have an indication of where construction is happening uh, in, in this area in between the city of Milwaukee, the city of Franklin and the city of Waukesha in the area in between there will have icons indicating where you're gonna come, come upon construction. We're also gonna put in, in updates, construction updates, or if we're having open houses, that information will be in the in your area for New Berlin. There's a New Berlin tab you can click on. And if we're gonna be having um, any open houses or notifications about something that's happening in your city, that's where we're gonna place that. And then we'll have general construction updates on the Great Water Alliance website as well. Another way that we can communicate back and forth and have some interaction, we have a hotline set up. Some of you may have used that before. You can always leave us um, a message and we'll respond within 24 hours to your questions. Um, that's a great way to get a hold of us. If something is not an emergency and you just have a question, you want to ask specific questions, as Dan said, even today, if we see some very specific questions, that's where we'll give you a call back and we'll have some one-on-one conversations with somebody who's an expert in that area if we need to be, or, or it might be myself or the construction manager. It just depends on the question. We'll get back to you though. We also have email and you can see the email address there. If you want to send us a question for your email, we try and respond to those within 24 hours as well. You can follow us on social media. We put stories, updates, information about open houses or um, construction starting in different areas or groundbreaking, things like that is all posted on our social media or just information about what construction is going to look like um, or videos about with educational materials about what you can expect 
during construction or why we're doing the project, all of that's either on Facebook, Twitter, or our YouTube channel. And you can see the, the handles there to get to that information. We also put together a newsletter that we put out to uh, folks that have signed up that want to get that e-newsletter that, that has information too. It has different articles, um, each newsletter that talks about potentially the water quality that's gonna be in Waukesha if you're curious about that or construction updates, program updates in general. And that's a way to keep, stay in contact with us as well and have that come into your inbox so you can take a look at that. Also, we'll be using direct mail periodically. For example, a lot of you that live right along the return flow route would have been, um, should have received a mailer about this open house so that you could get signed up. When we do the water supply open house, we'll do the same thing. We'll be sending out a mailer to folks that are um, adjacent to the route on both sides of the road. And then again, we'll have these open houses, which will try and get the information um, to uh, city staff at the city of New Berlin. And it'll be on the website too, if you're curious, if you don't get the mailer and you just wanna listen in um, to the different open houses. Also, as construction starts to get even closer to you, there's some more direct ways. If it is more immediate or you're looking for when is this going to be in my neighborhood exactly or when is this gonna be crossing my driveway? And Jim's gonna to talk to that a little bit more, but there will be door hangers that will be put on to your, um, onto your door <laughs> that will say, you know, within 14 days, we're gonna be coming uh, through this area in construction. It'll have information about what's happening and what you can expect. There'll also be signage that so you see construction uh, signage with um, moving signs that indicate whether there's detours or there might be workers on the side of the road. There'll be a, a number of construction signage that can give you some information too about where the construction is going to be. And then also a resource if there is something going on, let's say you are having something happening in the, the right of way in front of your house, there will be inspectors with the Great Water Alliance logo on their uh, the back of their safety vest and you can ask them questions. Um, if you have something that you, you're concerned about right in that moment, they may send you to the hotline or they may give you my number or Jim's number. But if, if there is something out happening on the construction site, look for the person in the Great Water Alliance safety vest and you can, uh, they can be your first person if, if you're standing there near the construction site. If you are gonna be near the construction site though, we want you to know safety is our number one priority. We want to ensure your safety, we want to ensure the safety of the workers, and we want to ensure that the work can proceed in a quick manner so that we are getting out of the way. So watch for barrels, watch for signs, please obey flagging operations. Um, if you, like I said, if you have a question and you want to talk to the inspector, the first thing we're going to do is make sure you're in a safe area and you're out of the, um, you're not in danger. So if, if they're asking, if the inspector's asking you to do something or a contractor is asking you to maybe move to a different location, please uh, please follow along with that. We're, we really wanna make sure that nobody um, is put in a dangerous situation as the construction is going on and can still have their questions answered. Okay, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the construction manager, Jim, and he's gonna go through some of the route in a little bit more detail. Thanks, Katie. So my name is Jim Cobb. I am the construction manager for the program. And I was going to give you kind of a upper level construction oversight, nothing too detailed, but if there are detailed questions, feel free to send them in and we'll get them addressed. Slide. So here's a little bit more detail on your return route. You can see it goes down South Racine towards 43. It parallels 43. Uh, in a field area across from it there on the north side of the road. It then will go underneath 43 using trenchless technology to not disturb the highway. Goes through some field and cuts around to an industrial area onto west small road for a period of time. And then it makes its way over to Moreland Road. So that's the overview of it. It'll actually start at South Racine Avenue by Swartz Road. And it will continue south towards 43. And it will actually switch from side to side, both east and west, based upon the topography and what's going on there to try and, you know, just limit the disturbance to areas. And there's some sensitive areas along there also. So that helps. It generally runs right along the edge of the road or right in the uh, first area for 
um, I would say probably the ditch area along there. Uh, it goes south Racine Court to Highway 43. It then uh, gets into the field paralleling that and runs, um, I guess it would be along 43 on the north side of the road down to um, Highway 43 crossing at Westco and then Westridge Court onto West Small Road and then West Small Road south to Moreland. So if you've been on South Racine lately, you've noticed this pipe sitting there. That is the pipe that will be installed, some of it. It's a pre-delivery that the contractor has. It's sitting there in the field getting ready for uh, inspection and then installation. So we talked a little bit about trenches technology. Um, S.J. Lewis Construction was selected for this project based upon a pre-qualification and a bidding process. They are qualified. They actually do not only open cut, but their own trenchless technology, which includes jacking and boring, auger boring, and tunneling, um, along with horizontal directional drilling, both a trenchless technology and again, the open cut. So here's some pictures of the trenchless technology. If you haven't viewed this type of activity before, you'll see that it's actually tunneling underground. Doesn't necessarily mean always that it's really deep. It is used to avoid certain sensitive areas and also areas that would really impact the public if it was shut down. So prior to the work, uh, the area will be televised and that is to ensure that the restoration is done and replace things in a like manner, if not better. Um, you'll be getting written notification as we're coming there 14 days prior to any street closure. Um, again, three days prior for restricting property access, one day prior as a follow-up. We like to leave these door hangers on the front door because we certainly don't wanna violate someone's privacy by going around to the side or the back. So please look for them on the front door. Um, I like to personally try and come by if I can and talk to people about any special situations they might have arising or has arisen since we put the door knocker on to try and facilitate a smoother transition of the work past their area. So with that, I will turn it back over to Dan for the question answer period. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, I appreciate, again, uh, every, people submitting questions ahead of time. Um, there is a question and answer button at the bottom of the screen that you can use to submit additional questions if you have those additional questions. Um, Feel free to type those in and, and submit those and we will get we will get those answered. So the first question that I have is will Racine Avenue be widened? Um, no, Racine Avenue will not be widened with this project. That is not the intent. We are not planning on widening this project um, at all. Um, we're just planning on going down Racine Avenue. If the county has plans to do that in the future at some point, um, I'm not sure, but it will not happen with this project. What side of Racine Avenue will the pipeline be placed? As we have talked, or as Jim has talked, it will go on both sides. So if there's a specific area that you are looking for, um, we can get into contact with you and we can let you know um, where that, where specifically that pipeline is going to be, but it does go jog back and forth along Racine Avenue. If trees are going to be removed, uh, uh, if trees are removed to place the pipeline, will they be replaced? The answer to that is um, we will replace um, we will replace trees and shrubs with like trees and shrubs along the route. They may not be as mature because we cannot we cannot uh, put as mature trees in there um, or replace them with as mature trees because they will not grow and they will not take. So what we have to do is we have to um, put in trees and shrubs that will be viable for that area, but we will uh, replace them at, um, with like kind when possible. Are the contractors going to open cut or directionally bore the water return line? There's both um, happening. Um, and again, if there's specifics wanted um, with regards to 
um, any specific place on the route, we can get into that. We can contact you and get that back to you. Um, there is, I live on the west side of Racine Avenue near National Avenue. It is, it is my understanding that the waste pipeline will run directly through my front yard and driveway. Three years ago, I had a deluxe driveway constructed, um, which looks much like a checkerboard I paid for this. I'd like to know what you are planning to do to replace this driveway to its current looking condition. I believe um, we did have a discussion with this individual and the specific materials for the driveway, we will be working with you on those materials and we will be replacing it um, with those materials. Um, I live on the west side of Racine Avenue near National Avenue. It is my understanding a waste pipeline will run directly through my front yard and driveway. Three years, oh, I'm sorry, that's a repeat of the same question. Let me go to the next page. Um, some of the properties that will be affected by this project currently have very shallow well systems because of the shallow aquifer that supplies them, in turn possibly affecting many more properties that are not directly adjacent to your project. If during your digging um, and tunneling process, your team disturbs the aquifer, which in turn disrupts the water tables, are you prepared to install or dig deeper wells for those properties that could be affected? At this point, we are not um, anticipating any dewatering that will be required. The only pumping that you will see is pumping out of the trenches that will water that accumulates in the trenches themselves. So we do not anticipate any major dewatering efforts. So in, in, in turn, um, we don't anticipate there's having any impact. If there is any impact, we do have an intergovernmental cooperation agreement with the city of New Berlin on how that will be addressed. If you have any questions specifically on those, you can contact us and we'll get back to you on that. Um, do you have current pictures and photos of the entire length of the project? Um, we are planning on documenting the pre-existing conditions to ensure that we are restoring uh, light to light conditions. So the entire project length will be documented. You have assured people through the project that whatever land is disturbed, such as cutting down trees and other vegetation, you will re replace it. Um, again, I'm gonna, we did answer this one before, we will be replacing the vegetation. Um, we may not be able to replace trees as large as they are right now because they wouldn't be viable, um, but we will, replace the, we will replace the vegetation, trees, plant, and grasses with like trees, plants, and grasses. Um, um, and then that is all the questions that we have. Katie, I think there were a few that came in. Yeah, there's a few that have come in. So there, there's a question about how this will affect the roundabout on Racine. And I'm assuming that this is the roundabout at I-43 and we will not be affecting that roundabout. Um, it, it, and then there's a follow-up question about which side of Racine north of the roundabout, is it east or west? And it, it, it is on both. We go back and forth on both sides, alternating um, east and west. So if, if you would like, we can follow up with you directly about where you are and where specifically the, the, uh, race, the pipe is um, in your area or the area you're concerned about. Um, okay, there's also a question about making sure that uh, the people that live on racing, on racing court get added to our email notification list and, and we can definitely do that. We'll have a stakeholder email that will come out uh, what, that you can get added to that will tell you about the upcoming construction. Um, and so we can do that. And then door hangers will be placed on the doors in the area if there's gonna be a change to the access. So like if, if a, a cul-de-sac is being cut off, then those people will get notification that there's going to be, and it won't get cut off all, you'll always have access maintained, but if it's gonna be a change in the pattern, you will get door hanger notifications that that's happening and upcoming. Okay, a couple more on the jewel. Uh, there was a question. Uh, Laura, I'm seeing your questions. I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna follow up with you individually because I'll have to look at a map uh, to see which side on jewel, Julius Heil side of Racine. So I will follow up with you and look into that for you. Katie, this is Nick. Just, just as a note, my, Q, my Zoom Q&A button does not allow me to enter a question. That's why I had to go to chat. So there may yeah. be other people out there who want to enter questions. If they're like my Zoom, they can't do it. Okay, Nick, I think yours is because as a function that you're signed in as a panelist and panelists can't go into the Q&A. So if you, if you are signed in as a panelist, uh, if, if your 
name is coming up as not your name, if you're coming up as the mayor as well, please feel free to chat or do, just do what Nick did. If you're signed in as an attendee, when you um, move your mouse, you should see a Q&A button at the bottom. I'm getting a bunch of questions, so I think they should be coming in here. Please, okay, so there's a question. Please follow up not only with Laura Pond, but about me as I am on the Julius Heil Drive as well. We are on the west side of the Sunnyside Cemetery. West side of the Sunnyside. And that's Dawn, so we will, we will, we will follow up with you, Dawn. Yes. Um, there's a question about Racine remaining passable during construction or will be shut down for a period of time. There is um, on Racine, I, it, there's always going to be traffic that's able to be going in both directions. So you might have lane closures, but you will be, it will be passable. And I'll look this up as we get a couple more questions coming in here. Sunnyside. I just, while you're looking that up, there was a question that I, that I did not get to that I looked at. Um, there's a question about flooding. If flooding becomes evident as a result of your disruption, you are, are, you are prepared to fix it question and any property damage that could also occur as a result. Um, we don't anticipate that. We will have inspectors out there at all times, correct, Jim? Yes, that's correct. And so we don't, and we wouldn't anticipate that there would be any flooding that would happen as a result of it, but we will have inspectors that will be out there. And if they, if they see that, they will have the contractors address it immediately. Right. Okay. And I looked up where um, Julius Heil Drive is, and we are actually on the east side in the, across from that drive. So we're going to be, it's, it's actually going to be part, a section of the pipeline where it is being tunneled. Uh, so we cross over before the park and ride, and then there's going to be tunneling that's done, but we will not be on the west side as we approach that. And we uh, will, we, we turn into the I-43 right of way before we get to that roundabout, if that's what you're concerned about. Perfect. Um, okay, there's a question about uh, approximately how deep the pipe is buried on average. It is approximately six feet to the top of the pipe. Um, in the open cut areas, the HDDs do go deeper because they're trying to get under things. Jack and board can be a little bit deeper than that too, but it's in the six to seven feet to the top of the pipe on average. Uh, Just so you know, with the jacking and boring portion of the main, that means that we're not open cutting, so there is not a trench in those areas. Right. Sorry, Katie. Oh yeah, no, no, it's helpful. Um, there's also a question that came in about the directional boring along the I-43 corridor and whether or not there will be a test vertical drilling done to see if the 30 foot depth of the directional bore will hit the shallow aquifer that feeds your uh, a well that's in that vicinity. Um, Eric, I think we saw questions come in from you and Renee. We're gonna follow up with you guys if that's okay and, and specifically talk about your situation because of the proximity to the construction. Um, but as Jim mentioned, we're, we're not anticipating uh, impact, so we'll follow up with you directly on that. Just checking to see if there's any I've missed here. Um, there's a, okay, perfect. There's a question about um, someone who has had their, their lot, lot marked out by a surveyor. So they, they have confirmed what is the right of way and what is their lot for future reference. And so we will, we'll follow up with you two individually. We see your question and talk about um, the potential for stakes to be dug up and, and what that timing might look like and what we can do about that. Is the return flow water um, pumped or is it gravity fed to the root river? And it's actually a combination of both. Um, so the return flow line is being designed as a, a pressure pipe in the event that uh, sometime in the future, we want to try and recover the energy that's used to pump from the city of Waukesha to Lake Michigan. 
but because of the hill and because of the subcontinental divide we have to get over and, and that's part of the reason we're just outside of it that we're getting the new water we pump up under pressure to the top of the hill and then it flows from gravity on the back side of the subcontinental divide so it is a combination of both of both And then there's a question about knowing Racine won't be widened. Will it be completely re-asphalted with the bike lanes? If it, yes, it, it will be returned. It, the pavement, the width of the pavement, the type of material for the pavement will be put back in as it is today. So if there's a bike line that exists now, the bike lane will go back in. If there is curb and gutter in it now, curb and gutter goes back in. If it's concrete, we put back in concrete. If it's asphalt, we put back in asphalt. But Katie, we are not we are not anticipating um, re-asphalting the entire Racine Avenue and adding a bike lane. No, um, we are not. To, We're... Intend to do that. I believe the right. county has talked to us about um, what their plans for the future. We have looked at what their plans are for the future and make sure our pipe is outside their future plans. But I do not. We do not have any timing on what what their plans are for Racine Avenue. I think we have all of them. Is that right, Katie? Yeah, that, I, I don't see any more coming in. It looks, oh, I, I misspoke. One just came in. What about mailboxes and such? Uh, mailboxes will, if they need to be removed, they'll be removed and put to the side so they can be put back in. If something should happen to them, again, as, as Jim mentioned, we're documenting. And if you want to document, you can feel free to do that. If something should happen, it would be replaced. In kind materials that it is today. Um, similar to the, the concrete or asphalt. Okay, I believe we've asked or uh, answered everybody's questions. If there are additional questions, you can feel free to email us. Um, and by visiting our Great Water Alliance website, there's an, a contact us button. You can contact us, you can call our hotline, um, or you can follow us through social media. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity we had to present this information to you tonight. Um, I will give the mayor one last chance to see if he has anything to say. I, I, it looks like he's on the line, but we have not heard from him yet. So mayor, if you would like to say. If you don't. Oh, sorry, Dan, I just wanted to say one more thing. If that wasn't clear about the mailboxes too, we will, the construction team will ensure that you get your mail um, and that the mail service is maintained. Um, if, if, they, if it does have to be adjusted for some reason, we will make sure that you are still getting your mail. And um, that's something we wanna ensure. And then just also uh, something to be aware of with the tunneling, there is a, there's, there's always going to be two areas of construction on both sides of the tunneling. So as Jim was talking about, you see what it looks like. There's things going on underground. You may see both ends. So I just wanted to clarify those two things as well. And now maybe that gave the mayor a chance to, to if he's there. Well, again, um, on behalf of the city of Waukesha, we really appreciate the opportunity to be in front of you today and to provide you with information again. You can contact us if you have further questions uh, via our hotline. Uh, there's a lot of information on our website, a lot of great information. That information will be updated as we go through construction. Um, so there'll be a um, what's happening in your neighborhood will be updated. So you'll be able to know what's happening in New Berlin. You can also follow us on social media, whether it's uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, or YouTube. We have um, Facebook uh, or we have social media available and we really, you know, want to make sure that we maintain that communication with you. So with that, I'm going to thank you um, on behalf of the city of Waukesha for attending and uh, hopefully you stay safe and have a good night. Thank you.